All right, we're speaking with Yemi Odom, who is the president and the co-convener of the 22nd East Coast Black Comic and Artist Convention. How's it going so far? I have to take a photo, but everything's going really well. This is our 22nd year. We're doing venue sports here. Um, Africa is coming up at 2 o'clock. We have panels and workshops simultaneously. Okay. So, how, how many artists, illustrators, and writers do you have this year? Officially, about 45 of our venues. Most we had some virtual guests, about 10 people virtually. Um, and the rest of us are here. Right. Okay. All right. So. Tell us a little about the organization and how you got to be ahead of the curve because now all of a sudden Afrofuturism Afro is big, uh, but you've been doing this way before it caught on. Way before. So I, I say bandwagon, but it's a, it's a good bandwagon for the most part. But I started back in 1986 in the first year of I came here in the and then I spent about a decade connecting with people. But then in 2002, we had our first big fight convention right here in Philadelphia at Tiffany Rivers. And all of what you see now with Blacks and Comics, that really does stem from Xbox right here. We connected people who didn't know other ones existed who were doing the We've always been like at the center of this. So we've been like underground, so I say we're the micro convention right. with mega impact. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's going to meet for the server right now came through Xbox or something. Okay. So how many artists would you say you have influenced over the years, and illustrators, and novelists, and writers? I would say hundreds. Mm -hmm. Even those who haven't come here, we have about 45 different conventions that have been spawned because of Xbox. Right, right, right. People who come here, have an idea, and they start it, or they call me and I share information, and they start conventions. A few of them are right here, right. and they're doing great work. I met someone who does a, a, a film festival in Newark. So was yeah, right. right. So have, were they a spinoff of, of your okay. idea? Right, right. Yeah, brother Nasi came to me initially for my blessing. I'm saying he did, he did a great job, and the conventions are all different. All the black age conventions, and they're about five of them now. Um, brother Nasi, they have one in Atlanta, one in Detroit. Um, I'm missing one. And the first one in Harlem, they all stem from Ekbach. So we're all different. Okay. This one still has a completely, like, entirely, entire devotion to black indie creators. Oh, everybody can come here. All of these folks here have their own comic books, right. even those who work at Marvel, DC, and even else. Okay. So okay. the main thing is to have independent creators. So you're basically focusing on personal entrepreneurs uh, and who want to carry the genre forward. And have provided space for them for the last 22 years. So they can go anywhere. And these folks here, Brother Campos and his group, they're our recent Heroic Award winners. So last night at the Glip Awards, they received the Heroic Award for 2023 for the character Monochrome. Now tell us about, because this is not a one day event, you do, uh, is it two or three? Well, technically, we are a year-round convention. Oh, okay. We do an annual convention in May, which is like two days or two and a half days. Like last night we had a different award, so then we have the full convention. And tomorrow we have breakfast at Reading Terminal for those who get up in the morning. Okay. So it's really about three days, two and a half days of us meeting with people. Um, but we do many conventions year-round. We've been to almost all the East Coast, as far south as Georgia, and as far west right now as Ohio. No. So we have people on, on the California side who want to do an Xbox convention called a wet box, W as opposed to N. <laughs> so we've been impacting the whole lot. We just have not been forceful in making that the case. But we can't help it. Um, you have a mentioned black comics. They really have come from Xbox. The people who they're celebrating, 
They go first and get all this at the bottom. You have a website where people can get more information, right? Okay, say that again. W-W-W-E-C-B-A-C-C. Now, how can how can they get in contact with you personally through the website? My number is public. Okay. Nine zero eight three three four one seven nine three. Okay. Give me that again. Give me, give me that number again. Nine zero eight three three four one seven nine three. One last question. Where do you see? What are your plans for the future? Where are you going? Intermediate and then long term. Well, more of this because I folks still need some support. Right. And this is really about black images, although the black images are included in that. But these images are for everybody. Right. Not just for us, it's for everybody right. to see them. Right. Because they need it. Right. So more of this, we still do our um, many, many kinds at different libraries and different museums. Um, we do our publishing, we have Equinox Publishing. Now, what is that? This is our first publication, and this is the first independent collaboration of artists mm -hmm. in this industry. Okay, okay. So each person has a chapter or something? Right. Either short story, uh, of course we have cross voice puzzles in here, word games, and about three or four comic stories, but it's also a learning tool. It's called Read for Fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. okay. Give us your uh, name, website, and phone number again, and we'll let you go with our gratitude. Thank you. This is Yumi Odom, founder and president of the East Coast Black East Coast Comic Commission, and in Comic Books. Uh, that's at www.ecbacc.com website, and the direct mobile number is my own, and it's public. It's 908-334-1793. Now, just one just for clarification. Do you prefer to continue you to use the word comics or you move into a graphic novel? No, when we say comics is more like this. If this were like just an old comic book, this would be a graphic novel if it were all comics as right. opposed to a right. workbook. Right. So okay. it's about the format, right. but also people choose graphic novel because it sounds like it's more right. adult, right. but this is a comic book. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Say your name for me. Hi, I'm Mary Muhammad of Mary's Murphy Company. Okay. Um, what's a digital marketing agency? So for us, digital marketing is we offer website development by building in WordPress as well as email marketing. So between the two means that help in a small and good size of existing customers to, or companies I should say, mm. to grow their businesses online utilizing our, our skill set. Um, these are some of the customers that we have. These are some of your clients? This is some of our clients here. And this is um, our new book that we created. It is a book called Shark Bites or an anthology called Shark Bites. And this is the first one where we're telling our adventure from a customer journey standpoint, mm. explaining how we were helping them uh, deliver our services. And it includes some activities to help people who are in business or starting a business check off the different things that they may need from a marketing standpoint. Clever way to do it. I'm clever. <laughs> okay. These are just some of my illustrations. Some of the customers that I had, I do use my illustration skills to help tell their story. So you have an artist background? I do have an artist background. I have a graphic design uh, bachelor's degree. However, I've been illustrating since I was seven years old. Where are you located? I'm located here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay, um, so <laughs> what's your uh, website? My website is miriamsmark.com. M-A-R-Y-A-M-S-M-A-R-K.com. Okay. Now, if someone came to you, a business person, an entrepreneur, what, could, what type of customer service could they expect? For me, I am very personable. Um, I want to Are you a hands-on sure type of person? I'm very hands-on. Okay. Um, he and I both deliver our products ourselves. You're usually okay. the forefront so who of is, the who is the he? Oh, he is Issa Muhammad. He is my son, graphic okay. designer, writer, and great kid. <laughs> Deliver it and work back and forth with our customers a lot to ensure they're 
them from building their order, making sure that so we're you stay on top of everything. Yes, and yes. We do have other developers that do help us, but they are not the ones that you'll talk to. You'll mm. talk to one of us right. for the most part. So you, you guys are the coordinators, right? Uh, uh, when, no, when, when someone comes and, and you take them on as a client, you coordinate everything. Right? For the most part, yes. I try my best to understand what their brand is so that we can go match what's going on and align on their marketing campaigns to where they're trying to go and help them grow in that magnitude. So um, it makes a, it's really important that we know at first what it is that we're going toward and knowing that the actual customer or company wants a campaign that they can track and grow. Right. From a marketing standpoint, we want to help you scale. So there's constant feedback and yes. So what's your role in, in excuse me, what's your role in the company? I give her ideas and inspiration for her design, mm -hmm. and I do make some of the designs. Okay. Like I gave her the idea for this one, and this okay, right hold here. Hold it up. Like, yeah. Okay. And I made the design for the shirt. Um, she usually ends up painting like everything, <laughs> but. To help my mama. Okay. Uh, good, she actually good, does good. help with some of the clientele work as well. So they, this gentleman here has a winner company. He's the um, the junior writer for him as well as his day. So you do web design and all that. He's more graphic design right now, but he wants a career in programming. So learning these skills now at the beginning. By the time he gets here, he wants to go to the He's very familiar. Yeah. Okay. So give us your website again. Okay. Is there a, a business phone number that you want to share? Sure. You can call, text, or WhatsApp me at 267-474-6713. Okay. All right. Continue success. Thank you so much. I'm impressed. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Oh, we got the GM in. Yeah. Yeah. This is also on the con symbol, too. Okay. I also have the Gene Yame on uh, my, okay. one of my characters. Alright, All right, so say your name for me. My name is AJ Amani. And tell us a little bit about your company and what you're doing. So we got Earth's Own Kingdom, is our new graphic novel company. We have three graphic novels today. We got a horror book called Dragon Face, a science fantasy book called Kimmy Cosmic, and an Afrofuturistic comic book called Drone Slayer. I'm also a hip hop artist, so we have CDs and tapes, I have stickers, and lots of uh, clothing and images. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when did you get started in all of this? So we started working on the books three years ago. We launched a company in January. Okay. So are you doing everything? You're the illustrator? I'm the writer, the writer creator, uh, designer. Uh, I have an art team for each one of my books. So I use colorists and artists for each one of my books. Okay. So where do your ideas come from now? Do you, are you are a, um, would you consider yourself multifaceted or are you just a I, real I would future? consider myself multifaceted, yes, okay. because not only do I do music and writing, but I'm also in design, production, uh, and now business. Right. So I have to hold many different hats right. in order to make all that stuff work together. Well, various concepts of the book, where do they come from? So I draw inspiration from everything. Uh, I love film. Uh, I love uh, music. I love nature. Um, so anything that I inspire, that I experience, I will pull inspiration from that into my book. But also, I'm a huge comic book fan. And I've been reading comic books since the 80s. Okay. So I'm, I'm, a fan, I'm a fan of classic comic books. You know, things like Alan Moore and, uh, you know, Jim Lee and, and things like that. Comic books from the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. um, inspire me a lot. So you weren't with the DC and Marvel? Well, no, I'm into Marvel and DC, but like, Marvel and DC to me is just like, there's about five or six other companies that put out great books. Everyone always talks about Marvel and DC. But I, Image, Valiant, Dark Horse, and there's a bunch of independent books that I read that you know aren't Marvel and DC that are fantastic. So right now, some of the best comics in the world are, in, are independent books. Right, right. So, what, what are your short-term, intermediate, and then long-term goals? 
Um, my short-term goals right now is just to build up an audience and build up a following mm -hmm. and get my books in front of as many people as possible. Okay. Long-term, I would love for my books to be eventually um, serialized. Right. Animation. Um, and all. Animation and everything is cool. You know, I'm actually one of those creators who is not super concerned about making it into a movie or TV show. Simply because, just because you get a book made into a movie or TV show doesn't mean it's going to be good. I want to focus on comic books as a medium. I want to master comic books, and I want to make my name in comic books. If along the line somebody decides to make it into a show or a TV show, that's cool. But that's not necessarily my medium. What's your website? EarthtoneKing.com. Okay. Um, then people can do e-commerce on your website. It's a full, okay. uh, full Shopify store on my own website. So you have clothing. I have clothing. You have music. I have music. I have, have books. books. And uh, merchandise, like stickers and like enamel pins. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, short term, what do you want to? What do you? Uh, and it, obviously, you want to grow the business. Obviously, you want to uh, make your brand uh, more marketable and more uh, familiar. But what do you want as your top priority short term? Um, my top priority short term is to make the best stories I can, and make and I want to make stories that are unique and original. Like, this is a space cowboy comic. No one that has that. But a black, a half human black girl. There's no comic like that. There's a lot of superhero comics, but this is right. completely original. Right. This is a, a sophisticated pulp horror book. Another comic book that is very original, very unique. So I'm all about doing stories that other people. Right. Are. So you want to be unique. I want to be unique, I want to be original, I want my voice to ring loudly because people also recognize the quality. If you notice, I have a UV cover here, soft touch laminate, yeah. I use dried out um, un unfinished paper. I'm very particular about the way my books are printed, the style of paper, the coloring, the color type. Now tell us a little bit because a lot of us are familiar with comics that didn't have color. My, my first introduction to black comics was Brother Man. So, so this, it, yeah. so this um, comic with John Slayer is a black and white comic. Mm -hmm. um, I actually used grayscale, so it's right, black right, and white, right, but right. you see shade, yeah, shades right, of it, right. so it's called grayscale. Um, that also is a creative decision. I like all types. I like black and white. I like color. I like bright colors. I like faded colors. It depends on the story. This is a horror comic, so I use faded colors. Mm -hmm. This was a science fantasy comic, so I use bright, vibrant colors. Um, my color design is completely unique and tied into the story that I'm trying right, to tell. Right, right, right. And now so you put all of that together in the planning process. Absolutely. So currently, right now, I don't want to reveal too much. I'm planning a comic book that's using a, a specific type of ink and color that hasn't been done before. That's going to be my next project. And once again, it's tied into the story. Trading right. It's an integral stories. part of the story. Right. Yeah. Because if I'm going to give you a book, I want to make sure that as you read it, you're experiencing something that you're not you wouldn't be able to experience else. any place else. When I was a kid, I loved books, I loved TV, I loved video games, but comic books were my favorite because they were video games. There's something about the sequential storytelling, there was something about the artwork, there was something about the character design that was very unique to comic books specifically. And that why, that's why it became my favorite medium to experience. Okay. Give us your website again. EarthtoneKing.com. Okay. EarthTone. EarthtoneKing.com. All right. All right. Continue success. Best wish. You are the artist and, and the artist creator. Okay. Creator, publisher, Mr. Everything of Black Two Publishing, Omari Malik. Okay. What's your first name? Omari Malik. Okay. Um, so how'd you get started doing this? Man, I've always been in the comics, man. Like since. <laughs> <laughs> so always, 
like flipping through his comics, and like as soon as they put a pencil in my head, I was going very terribly trying to come up with my own story. Okay. So what is this is your publishing company. So how many books do you have? So right now we have three books and an anthology. So I have a book called A Dancer. That's about a 15 year old girl who has the power to shape shit. A book called Snake Bite. That's about a guy that just got out of juvie. He made him his friends. He's had to get tattoos. His tattoos give him superpowers. So now he's going to get out of the street. Or if it is superhero. And then the third one is called Dog Ride. It's about a guy that lost his family in a mysterious accident. Ran away, developed super problems. Yeah, the most great dogs. Now as an adult, he's going back home to fight crime and figure out what happened. How can people get more information about your company and your book? Check us out at black2publishing.com. Slow down, slow down. Go ahead. Black2publishing.com or at black2publishing. Okay. Uh, any uh, no, email or website or anything like that? So yeah, like I said, black2publishing.com. The email at info at black2publishing.com. Okay. All right. Good luck to you, man. Con Thank continue you. success. Black two publishing. Hey, gentlemen, how are you? All right. Now, what what is your book and your publishing company called? So we're called Epos Epos Comics. Uh, the word Epos stands for Epic Poetry. So uh, because of that, that's the name of the company. We have two books. Uh, he's one of the writers uh, for this book, you know, Demise. And I'll let him explain Demise. So from here to here, this is Demise. This is the Grim Reaper. It's a race of Grim Reapers. So someone's killing angels and demons. The only person that can wield that weapon is somebody from the Grim Reaper race. So you have angels and you have demons attacking the Grim Reaper in his race. And he's trying to figure out who's doing it. So it's kind of like a murder mystery slash horror. So let's see what's going on. Let's see what's happening. So how many uh, volumes have you had? So this is the first one. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So would you consider yourself Afrofuturistic or you're a more spiritual type of uh, thing? That's a good question. I probably want to consider myself religious. Okay. Yeah, I'm just a regular person writing regular books. <laughs> However, I do appreciate both John. Okay. All right. All right. So, your role? Yes. So, I'm also uh, Say your name. one of the founders of Brother Damaju Razi, uh, one of the three founders. Uh, this book here is actually one of the other books that we offer uh, by one of our other partners, Jared Rigmaton, is the one that wrote this book. This book is called the strings. So the strings takes place 150 years in the future. There are no more governments, so corporations run the world. Right. So uh, it takes place that now you have strictly upper society and lower society. There's no more middle, middle right. class. More like a feudal kind of thing. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. And so, of course, the upper echelon of people, they have all the great things, all the amazing new technology. They have chips that makes their lives longer, makes them stronger. Longer, and then you have the poor people, so they don't have advanced tech. They look very, very uh, yeah, at the bottom, they're yeah, at the bottom, the bottom. Of them, yeah. but they're used as workers at times, and they're, they're dogged out. So, then so that's it, like they're the drones of society, right? Yeah. However, I want to add something. Yeah, they're they're so advanced that their poor tech, we are more people, is better than the tech. Right, right, we got right. that. Right. Right. So we'll be grateful to have their kind of tech. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Indeed. Indeed. So that's just a, a, a quick synopsis of this here. So this is. So would you consider yourself? This theme, Afro, Afro um, futurism. This theme, they probably would consider that because it does take place in the future. It does involve melanated characters. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I, I would definitely put that right on that. Yeah. Okay. So, give us some more information about the company. So, Epos, you can check us out at eposcomics.com. Uh, also, you can check out, uh, we have merch. We also have um, more books coming. We have a third graphic now, which is what I wrote. It's called Sleep the Swordsman Waking Boom. So that's a project in the works. Uh, it's also been released as a novel. So you can get that on Amazon. So that's, that's a whole lot of uh, But the company, we, we came together basically in my basement. We came together in my basement. Uh, we all had ideas. We started bouncing each other ideas off each other. Team. 
Okay. All right. Uh, give us your website again. So it's epostcomics.com. So epost is spelled E-P-O-S-Comics.com. So they can do e-commerce on the website, right? They can order everything. Yes. I know, but I'm saying you got Thank you so much. All right, say your name for me. Hi, my name is William Macy. I'm the co-creator and the principal for Reaper's Touch. Okay. Now tell us about that. What what how would you classify that? What kind of what genre is, does that fall? Probably would classify it as being more like sci-fi horror, more or less. Because our story takes place with Devon Midnight, who's a 17-year-old who for all intents and purposes becomes the unwitting person of a supernatural assassination in his life. Mm -hmm. um, that being said and done, he, everything that he believed that his life was going to be about up until that point has now completely been uprooted and changed. Right, yeah. Flipped and all over. <laughs> yeah. So you go from one day where it's just like you learn that things move from an A and B situation to like all of that was completely natural. Mm -hmm. And then you find that you're also the centerpiece to everything that will happen in the universe. So does he have super intellect or he has superpowers or he's just going through, has both, but he's just going through the process of trying to find out who he is and how to deal with life. So for right now, it's a coming of age story as well. Okay. Because not only does he find out that he's the centerpiece of what happens in the universe, but yes, powers are thrust upon him and you have to adjust to what's going on with those powers. The reason that it's called the Reaper's Touch is because it also has to do with our perception of what we believe that the office of death is. So whereas death normally you see shrouded the end, cloak, the final, the skull, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is not the case. In this case, death is more like a core group of people that celestial beings have put into play to collect souls so they don't have a complete like allegiance to one or another. So it's not like, oh, we're going to follow heaven or oh, we're going to follow hell. They just do their job. So it's like to, they, to the highest bidder or something like that? Not even for the highest bidder. Literally, they just are a neutral component, but this throws a huge ripple into what that neutrality would be. Mm -hmm. okay. So how can people get more information about the company? Oh, the company is Focus Mind Studios. You can reach us at www.reaperstouch.com. Um, you can also find us on Instagram at the Reapers Touch 2020, or you can reach out to me individually, which is Mad Mace Artist Hour. How can people get copies of the? Now, do you call them comic books or are they graphic novels? These are comic books. Okay. So, our book. I'm sorry. You can find the QR code if you mm -hmm. purchase it. So mm -hmm. that's the QR code right there. Mm -hmm. And also, all our information is on the inside. Okay. So okay. you'll find our Instagram, our Facebook handles, all those things are there. Okay. For merchandise, t shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, um, iPod, uh, new chargers, we do those too. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck to you. Okay. Say, say your name for me. Uh, Nasi Gifted of PBS Media Studios. Okay. And uh, what's PBS Media? Uh, PBS Media is Focus Black Star Media. We are the producers of animation, uh, graphic novel series, PB Soldier, and Jason, the roles that grew from the concrete coming out in September. Mm -hmm. Um, are you the principal? Are you the owner? Are you the president? Are you I am the creative director of PBS Media Studios, uh, and it's a team of individuals who uh, produce uh, all of our intellectual properties. Uh, and then also, we also produce a con called Kimfest, which celebrates black animation, gaming, and comic book creators uh, right. in North New Jersey. Right. When does that take place? Uh, that takes place in September, September 23rd to 24th. This is our ninth annual this year uh, in North New Jersey at Cityplex 12, which is uh, Shaq's movie theater. Okay, so how can people get information about the company and the uh, festival? Yes. So for the company, you could go to pbsmediastudios.com. That's PBS media studios.com uh, for Kimfest you can go to Kimfest which is K H E M F E S T dot com. Okay. Now your books and novels, yes. how many do you have? 
Uh, so far, we only have one volume, which is a compilation of the, uh, the various books that we actually printed. And then we're actually coming out with the next graphic novel, which is Jason, The Rose That Grew From The Concrete, uh, appearing in uh, September. Okay. All right. All right. So give us your website again. Uh, our website like is www.pbsmediastudios.com. And they can do e-commerce on your website, right? Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good no, luck to you. First of all, tell us your name. Ryan Williams. And you're the principal of the company? Yes, Soul Hammer Comics, out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. So um, how long have you been doing this? I've actually started in 2010 here at Eggback. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. Not in this location. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay, so your company, how many novels or comic books or other artifacts and articles do you produce? We actually now, uh, we had about four issues and we condensed them down into uh, bigger books. Right. So now we so have... So yeah, it's a compilation? Yes. Yeah, okay. So now we have uh, two issues of the Harlem Shadow and one issue of Lucius Hound. And they're both, they both clock in at about 48 pages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So how can people get more information about what you're doing? Okay. Um, they would most certainly, most definitely catch me on social media. Lucius Hammer on Instagram. Okay. Uh, Brian Williams at the Harlem Shadow on Twitter. Uh, but most importantly, www.saltandhammercomics.com. Now they, the people who are interested can do e-commerce on your website. They can order the, the, the novels. They can order everything that you produce on the website. Absolutely. Now, I will say this. I'm lagging behind. These are the first time these have been present in the physical world. Right. They're all digital. Oh, okay. Right okay. Now. Okay. But I will be putting up a page probably by the end of June, June or by the end of May or June first. It will allow you to order fulfillment mm -hmm. physical for physical books. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, just give me a synopsis of the Harlem Shadow and Lucas Hammer. Okay. Good. So let me let me let me break it down for you, so that everybody understands. I always wanted to write Luke Cage at Marvel Comics, mm -hmm. but Marvel ain't gonna let me write Luke Cage. So I decided to create my own version of Luke, Luke Cage, which became Lucius Hammer. As I was writing him, I learned that, and I decided that hey, I gotta create a framework or, or a history of black superheroes as his background. So I said, Backstory yeah. and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, I said to myself, who started all of this? Who was the first black superhero? Because they didn't create black superheroes in the twenties, but that's when all the white superheroes started to emerge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said, wait a minute, the Harlem Renaissance occurred right there in the twenties. Right. Why don't I create the first black superhero in Harlem? So that's where the Harlem Shadow came from. And he kind of serves as the influence of Lucius Hammer to become a superhero. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do they meet or do they cross over or is this a different time frame? This is a, these, this is the twenties and this is the sixties and seventies. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they will eventually meet in a kind of a time <laughs> Okay, trope. okay. Everybody's doing Yeah, everybody's travel. doing yeah. universal, Multiverse. parallel. Yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But guess what? This is the first time we'll see some black folks. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, we know time travel too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we gave them the idea. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. So that's kind of what I'm doing, man. I, I'm on a I'm on a crusade. Um, I want to create iconic black characters for everybody. Mm -hmm. it don't just have to be black folks, mm -hmm. but I want now, iconic are you, black characters. Are your characters are they pure heroes? Are they anti heroes? Or are they what? What's, what's the deal? these? The characters you're seeing right now are pure heroes. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't want to say supernatural, but they're sci-fi, like a superhero. Right. Yeah, now, that doesn't mean I won't have an anti-hero at some point. Well, I'm not a fan of anti-heroes, so... <laughs> well, well, you know, it's... Uh, okay, so you've watched the NBA for the past how many years? <laughs> Wouldn't you say Charles Barkley is probably an anti-hero? 
Uh, well, I think he was someone who was a little to the fringe. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him an anti. -hero. He was wary of being known as a hero. Right, 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 right. Maybe characters that skirt the line of that, I might, you might see some of those pop up because that's interesting, you know. Everybody does, do we think is good is not right, right, completely. Right, right. And everybody that we think is bad is not. Right. And we, we don't know the true motives of everybody. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So where, what do you want to do in, in the short term and then the long term? I've been through a, a kind of a journey already. I told you, I, I first visited ECMAC in 2010 mm -hmm. and had a great launch and uh, actually attracted the attention of Def Jam Entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, Russell Simmons was actually moving forward to try to develop so like an animation animated yeah. series yeah. and then everything fell apart. Right. Um, wasn't, a good, it wasn't a pretty situation, but I got over it, you know. Um, and I learned at that point, just don't worry about deals, don't worry right, about right, money, right. Um, create the work do the work, create the project, and then everything else will come Take along. Care of yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm focused on: creating books that people can buy. They have classic, iconic adventures involving black superheroes. The other thing, I, I, I don't know if you are familiar with uh, Brother Man, The Sims Brothers. That's they my, were they were the classic. That's classic my major guy. influence. Right, right. And like when I when I started with this, I sent him a I sent him a text mm. or an email through Facebook, and I said, you know, you're the reason that I do it. Okay. Well, it was three of them. It was three brothers. Well, Dawood is the one that right, I right, right, interact right, right, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I just wanted to point this out. They had an opportunity to do an animated series on Brother Man, but they didn't like the the way that the studio or the people they wanted to retain control of. They wanted to do the same thing with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just passed that along yeah. and followed away. So you yeah. know. Okay. Yeah, they tried to do the same thing with me. And you know what? Look, I ain't mad at them. Right. right. I understand they got money and they think they know more. But there's a reason why you looked at me in the first place because you saw something. Right. Right. All right, well, continue success, man. Stay